Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a ratio problem. We have x over a equals y over b equals z over c, and that equals to the expression ax plus by plus cz plus 2 all over a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus 3. So we're going to be using some properties of ratios and proportions to make this problem easier to solve. But let's just go ahead and talk about those properties first, and then I'll just illustrate how we can use the the properties in this problem. So the property goes like this. If you have something like, and I could pretty much, you know, use the same uh, variables here, it wouldn't matter. So if x, x over a is equal to y over b, and let's say they're both equal to k, and k is in this case a constant, right? If x and a are proportional, y and b are proportional, we can say that. And we don't need to include the z here because whatever works for two variables is also going to work for three variables and so on and so forth. So. From here, we can safely say that, let's go ahead and add these up. For example, x plus y, and then divided by a plus b, the ratio is not gonna change. It's still going to be k. And we can do more than that. So let's say we multiply the x by m, and multiply the y by n, and add them up. And then of course, we do the same thing at the bottom, so we're not changing the x over a ratio. So it's gonna be like m a plus n b, and this is still k. So that's the property of proportions that we're gonna use in this problem. To make the left-hand side, like these three things here, to look like that, I'm going to go ahead and use, uh, you know, A, B, C. So I'll multiply X, Y, and Z, those fractions, by A, B, and C respectively. And of course, I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom. And then let's see what that gives us. Okay. So if you multiply, let's go ahead and change colors here. If you multiply the X by A, it's going to be A, X, and then B, y and then cz. So of course we have to do the same thing at the bottom, a times a is going to be a squared, b times b is going to be b squared, and c times c is going to be c squared. Notice that ax over a squared is still the same as x over a, so that ratio is not going to change. And of course this should equal the same k, which is ax plus by plus cz plus 2 all over a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus 3. Okay, great. So if you call this original thing k, at the end we're going to talk about the values of k, and we're going to use that here. So now, what do you notice about this equation? Obviously, you don't want to just cross multiply and distribute everything, because notice that certain things are being repeated here. So what are they? Let's take a look. For example, I do see ax plus by plus z here, and I do the same thing here. So what, what this means is I can use substitution. So let's go ahead and call this u, okay? So this is also going to be u, and let's call this v, okay? So this is going to be v as well. So what we have is much simpler, of course. u over v equals u plus 2 over v plus 3. Now this kind of shows you the power of substitution in math. It's very, very powerful. It's a very common technique. So let's go ahead and cross multiply now, it's a lot simpler. This gives us uv plus 3u equals uv plus 2v. 2v or not 2v? Well, it didn't work, but anyways, I tried at least, right? So this gives us 3u equals 2v. And from here, we get some important uh, information. Why? Let's go ahead and back substitute. What is u? Well, u is equal to ax plus by plus z. So 3 times ax plus by plus cz is equal to 2 times v, and remember, v is the a squared plus b squared plus c squared, right? That part we called v. Okay, great. So now we have this proportion, but how does this help us? Again, you're not going to distribute and try to solve this because there are too many variables, but if you look at the original expression, you're going to notice that our k value, of course, this is equal to k, right? Our k value is equal to this ratio. So why don't we go ahead and try to get that? So k, in other words, k is equal to u over v, right? Okay, great. So k is equal to u over v. Okay, great. So what is u over v then? Well, u is this one. So let's go ahead and write it this way. ax plus by plus cz over a squared plus b squared plus c squared. But you know that from here, if you divide both sides by, you know, some stuff, you're going to get two thirds, right? So you're going to divide by this and you're going to divide by three. So you can kind of figure it out, right? 
So from here we get something important because we get the k value. That's important. So k is equal to what? Two thirds. Great. That is important. Because remember, when we had our original expression, we set it equal to k, and we now have a value for k, a numerical value for k. Isn't that beautiful? Awesome. So k is equal to k is equal to two thirds, right? So what am I going to do with this k value? Well, I'll, I'll just substitute it into the original problem, and then from there I'm going to try to find x, y, z. By the way, our goal was to solve for x, y, z. A, B, and C are just parameters, which means that when you change the values of A, B, C, the values of X, Y, Z are also going to change. So I'm going to skip that page and go to this one, and let's rewrite our original expression. So our original expression said something like X over A equals Y over B equals Z over C, and that was equal to, you know, K, right? And we found the K value to be two-thirds, right? So k is equal to two-thirds, great. Now what do you get from here? x equals a k, y equals b k, and c, I was supposed to write z, z equals c k. Well, from here we can find the values of x, y, and z, and they're going to be x equals 2k over, I mean k is equal to two-thirds, so it's going to be 2a over 3, y is going to be 2b, to be or not to be. Yes, finally, I got it. To be over 3, and z is equal to 2c over 3. So we get the values of x, y, and z here, but where does this property come, come from? Maybe we can just briefly talk about it real quick. So my property said basically if I have this, then I can just go ahead and add them up, right? So basically if you use these, you're going to be able to prove that really quickly. So I'm talking about mx plus ny over m a plus n b and i'm claiming that this is also equal to k because if you replace x with a k m a k and then y with b k it gives you n b k divided by m a plus n b and from here you can basically factor out a k and you should get m a plus n b of course under certain conditions you don't want denominators to be zero so on and so forth and this proves that our expression actually equals K as well. And this is a really nice property of proportions, by the way. You know, uh, that can be used in very many different situations. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know what you think about the video. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye bye.